Our news day, and by the way, with the Russian scandal threatening to consume Donald Trump's presidency itself, Michael Cohen today informed the House Oversight Committee that he was postponing, perhaps indefinitely, his scheduled testimony because he fears for his life and that of his family. His advisor and lawyer, Danny Lanny Davis, said the decision was, quote, due to ongoing threats against him, his family, from President Trump and Mr. Giuliani. Well, President Trump, who has called Cohen a rat, has urged authorities to toss the book at him, while also suggesting federal authorities investigate Cohen's father-in-law. Let's watch Trump. He's in trouble on some loans and fraud and taxi cabs and the stuff that I know medallions. nothing about. And in order to get a sentence reduced, he says, I have an idea. I'll, uh, tell, t I'll give you some information on the president. Well, there is no information, but he should give information maybe on his father-in-law, because that's the one that people want to look at, because where does that money? That's the money in the family. And I guess he didn't want to talk about his father-in-law. He's trying to get his sentence reduced. So it's uh, pretty sad. He, you know, it's weak. Well, as Trump's personal lawyer and fixer for all those years, Cohen has been in a position to share everything he knows about his old boss. Think about that for a moment. Everything Trump's been up to. And during his sentencing hearing, Cohen told the court time and time again, I felt it was my duty to cover up his dirty deeds. And just last month, Cohen admitted to breaking campaign finance laws to suppress the stories of two women alleging affairs with Donald Trump and said he did that at the direction of the president. Well, sources close to Cohen told NBC News that his wife and father-in-law are particularly scared and feel directly targeted by this president. The sources also told NBC, quote, the threats are real and Trump knows what he's doing. For more, I'm joined by Elliot Williams, former federal prosecutor, Natasha Bertrand, staff writer for The Atlantic, and Donnie Deutsch, chairman emeritus of Deutsch, Inc. Donnie, what is, uh, to put it bluntly for people out there who are trying to figure out why a guy would call off his testimony, which has been so anticipated as the sort of the John Dean or Chuck Colson testimony of this whole scandal, is afraid. What does he fear physically, criminally, what? Why is his um, wife crying every <clears throat> night, according to ex uh, evidence here? I, I, Chris, we talked about this last week. <clears throat> Excuse me, show we, I, last week where I sort of close and personal. I was on the phone with him right after uh, Trump did that, and he says, my wife is sitting here crying. I, I, this, is my, this is my father. This is my 80-something-year-old father-in-law. He goes, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? This is, and he was, afraid. and it's not only that, it is the thousands of rancid threats to his children that started as a result of him testifying in Congress. Obviously, if you like Trump, you don't like Michael Cohn, but it's gone to a new heinous level. Um, Trump clearly was threatening him. I saw the reaction. I saw, as we talked last week, I saw him back up. And the other thing, and you didn't do this in the tease up, is that Michael is still a cooperate, part of cooperating in ongoing investigations. And I think he felt it was his best interest, he threw his best interest in the investigations, but mostly for his family. He volunteered to do this. You know, I don't know in the history, there are too many people who are already going to jail and then they volunteered to speak in front of Congress. And, you know, obviously that's not necessarily a particularly friendly place, particularly on the Republican side. I don't know if the Democrats would be so friendly to him, but I really believe he so wanted to tell certain stories. And he'll get them out there eventually, and he'll probably go in front of Congress eventually. But I think for the safety of his Do you think he's telling the truth about physical fear for his family? Do you Absolutely. think he's afraid of some nut or real fanatic out there who likes Trump going after his Chris, family physically. Chris, I can absolutely, absolutely attest to that. I, I, he's read me some of the emails. And on top of that, when the president, you know, there are a lot of nuts out there. There are always going to be nuts out there. But when the president, you know, just like the godfather and Freddie Pantangelo, really comes out and threatens your 80-something-year-old grandfather. And by the way, this is the man that the Department of Justice, I mean, father-in-law, the Department of Justice reports to the president. The president is the chief law enforcement official in this country. So even when I said to him, I said, well, Michael, you, you're kind of insulated. He's called out your father-in-law. He can't do this. And he said to me, really? Really? It would be okay if it was your father-in-law? And, you know, I've seen Michael through a lot. And I've seen Michael be strong. And I've seen Michael crack a little bit. But when it comes to his family, and by you may like his politics, you may not like his politics, you may think he's a crook, you may think he's a good guy, but he is a devoted father. A very and a very devoted husband. And that hits a very different nerve, particularly when you were volunteering to do it. Natasha, your thoughts about the threats 
And of course, the witness tampering behind it all, because if the president, it's one thing if somebody on television says this guy's no good or this person's no good. When the president of the United States says there's no good, there's all possibility of wild behavior out there in the streets. He could be going to a restaurant and somebody could attack him. We don't know. He's obviously his wife's thinking about that. But let's get to the legal question. Threatening uh, administration action from the top of the chief executive himself against the father-in-law. Yeah, that looks like a combination of witness tampering and an absolute abuse of authority by a president. Your thoughts? Yeah, and so when I spoke to Lanny Davis earlier, the first question I asked him was, were there more threats than just the ones that were presented by the president via Twitter, presented by his president's, by the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, on the Sunday shows? And he said that he wasn't willing to get into that, but that the president signaling to the rest of the world that this was someone who was a rat, who was not telling the truth, who was just in this to protect his family and his father-in-law from perhaps criminal prosecution, was enough for it to really get him to change his mind. Now, of course, the question of whether Democrats are going to see this as obstruction of justice, that's already been answered because Democrats actually sent out a fairly unprecedented letter directly to the president warning him against tampering with witnesses when the president you know, first tweeted about Michael. Cohen's appearance before Congress um, next month. So they clearly believe that obstruction of justice by the president is an impeachable offense because we saw them coming out in mass last week saying, look, if the president directed Michael Cohen to lie at any point, and if, it, you know, and if the president was trying to suborn perjury, then that is impeachable. And they, you know, said that they would not hesitate to launch impe impeachment proceedings. If it is proven that the president has been trying purposefully to get Michael Cohen to intimidate him out of testifying before the committee, then mm. that too could be seen as a blatant obstruction of justice and Democrats could very well take action. You know, Elliot, even at the worst of Watergate, uh, if Richard Nixon, he never would do this because he had some basic respect for institutions, yeah. despite all his wrongdoing. If he came out and said to John Dean, if John Dean says a word against me, I'll get his family. I mean, it's, it is mob talk. Right. It's absolutely mob talk. Look, we are in day 734 of one long act of obstruction of justice. Sometimes it's tweets. Sometimes it's firing an FBI director. And sometimes it's potentially uh, directing the Justice Department to go after someone's father-in-law. They're all Now, you can't charge them all as crimes. Like, I don't know what you could get the president for under the statute. Statute, the obstruction of justice or the witness tampering statute. But this is a, all of the, a it's a big about bucket television. of yeah. If you go on television as president, authority yeah. figure, at least yeah. or a third of the country still, and you say, this is a rat. This is a rat. This is a bad being. You know, and somebody goes out and throws a rock at him or whatever happens. You know, never, somebody, no, you know, or just gives him a hard time in terms of like assault of right. some kind. Would that be part of the president's responsibility? If the, pre if the president knew he was directing someone to commit the crime. Here's the problem. The yeah. president, when you have the ability to to start investigations, when you say the words, you, know, you should you ought to go after that guy. Yeah. When you're the head of the executive branch, it's necessarily a threat. It's necessary. Mm -hmm. Someone will perceive that. That, that this man is trying to sick the Justice Department on me. So mm. even, again... I got you. Even if he doesn't call up right. uh, uh, the, uh, William Barr and says, Bill, right. Right. nail this father-in-law for me, it's still... And, and it's shady. Look, Joyce Vance calls it um, awful but lawful conduct sometimes. Yeah. It might be something that maybe you couldn't convict him of, but it's just bad for the president to be doing. We well, know that. Well, the president was asked today about Cohen's allegations against him. Michael Cohen's testimony, he says he's been threatened by, by you and uh, uh, Mr. Giuliani. He and his family have been threatened. Well, I would say he's been threatened by the truth. He's only been threatened by the truth. And uh, uh, he doesn't want to do that probably for me or other of his clients. Uh, he has other clients also, I assume, and uh, he doesn't want to tell the truth for me or other of his clients. Donnie, there he goes again. Is he referring to uh, uh, Russian clients? Is he referring to mob clients that we've talked about it before? That's why he's a completely cooperating witness, because he doesn't want to testify against really scary people in addition to the president. What do you think is the president's reference there to his other clients? Uh, the, what he always does, point, look at the shiny object over there. Look, Michael was in-house counsel for Donald Trump for over 10 years. He didn't have other clients. Yes, I think afterwards he started to work some other people, that, but that's not what this is about. And I want to come back to also the threats because it is clear there are always nuts out there and there are going to always be nuts. out. But where, where Michael really turned is when he saw his wife hysterical crying and saying, now they're going to drag my father into it. And I think that that really kind of, I don't want to say broke Michael, but I think he kind of had a real different way of looking. You have to just sometimes picture yourself. And once again, like Michael Cohen, not like Michael Cohen, you've, you've dragged your family through this. That's the thing that's killing you most. You know, you see, you go to bed with your wife crying every night, and now out of nowhere, the president, not some nut, 
the president saying, you're next, father-in-law. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.